Welcome to an exceptional edition of Rebellion's educational series. We're gonna be looking at AI in Armenia, a subject near and dear to my heart, as I love the country of Armenia, and my old friend, Dr. Joseph Simonian is on today. Dr. Simonian is one of the brighter individuals I have ever come across. Not only did he run Quant at Natixis, but he's worked at a variety of awesome places. He's actually the direct, one of the co-directors of the Journal of Portfolio Management, which is one of the most respected journals out there. I probably had like eight papers rejected by him, but he's a great guy. And he also is now the Chief Investment Officer of Autonomous Investment Technologies. So Dr. Simonian, we're so happy to have you on today. Alex, thank you. Uh, always happy to speak with you uh, and Rebellion. Uh, and this is a topic that's uh, near and dear to my heart as well. A lot of exciting stuff to report. Um, so great to be here. Uh, no, it's, it's wonderful to have you here. So tell us first, is the Armenian AI scene taking off? Is it exciting right now? Well, yeah, I mean, I think, I think the um, IT industry as a whole, and AI in particular, Armenia, is really uh, in a great state, right? So you have to understand first, Armenia used to be part of the Soviet Union. It was regarded as the Silicon Valley of the Soviet Union. They produced a lot of the microelectronics and guidance systems for the Soviet Air Force, so on and so forth. So even from that, that era, uh, there was a, a great congregation of human capital and scientific research in the country. Yeah, great point, Dr. Simonian. A significant portion of the Russians' intercontinental, intercontinental ballistic missiles were developed in Armenia. So there's been a fantastic history of technological development and you know, academic uh, strength throughout the country. There has, and you, know, you see some, some of the residues even outside the IT industry. For example, Armenia has, I think, one of the only particle accelerators uh, in the region. Armenia, if you look on the map, is just south of Russia and the Caucasus. Uh, also has a working and functional nuclear power plant, which is, again, the only one in the region, uh, aside from Russia, obviously. Uh, and so, yeah, there is this, this great tradition of scientific achievement in the country, which has carried through uh, into the IT industry and AI in particular. Um, I think um, there are a few strands uh, of AI that are particularly exciting, right? So there are uh, some com commercial developments uh, in, in uh, commercial applications. For example, there's a company called CRISP, uh, K-R-I-S-P, which, uh, and by the way, I have, I have no commercial ties to any of these companies, so um, they might buy me a beer next time I'm in the country, but that's about it. That's but this, this, uh, they produce uh, an application that is uh, quite useful for people like us who want to call uh, and a Zoom presentation like this. Essentially, it blocks out all the background noise. So if any of you, you know, all some of the our, our viewers and listeners have kids, you understand that if you're doing a business call and there's background noise that gets in the way, they essentially use machine learning, this application does, to essentially figure out what is noise and what is actual signal, the important speakers, and to block them out. And that's just a commercial application. Uh, but we have, uh, you know, other companies, uh, for example, um, FaceHub, it's a, it's a facial recognition company. Uh, and yeah, you, you asked the question. Go ahead. I was going to ask, you mentioned blocking out noise. I know you recently published a paper on a causal learning application uh, on you know, and causal learning is something I'm very new to, in fact. You know, my an initial development was on Bayesian networks inspired by my buddy, Judea Pearl, who's a, a great uh, UCLA professor. He's actually now, Judea is pushing me now to look at causal learning uh, as, as, you know, for the next generation of financial models. So very, very interesting. And by the way, I highly recommend any of our viewers to check out Professor Pearl's work. Uh, I'm a big fan of his. He's coming on the show soon and uh, really good. Yeah, so, uh, you know, uh, Pearl is a UCLA professor, I'm a UCLA alum, obviously, and that paper was inspired directly by, oh, I, uh, again, by a, causal net, a causal networks, and the whole idea, just briefly, of that paper was that, uh, first of all, I think it's probably one of the only papers to look at um, causal networks in finance. I could be it's wrong. It's the only one I've seen in the last year, and all I do is pretty much read research. Half of my guests for the show come from the research papers I read and then I just hit their email at the top of the page afterwards. Right, but the, but the main crux of that paper was, you know, if you notice the title has robust causal, a robust noisy OR model. And noisy OR is a particular type of causal network. And the whole idea is there that a noisy, noisy OR, OR model in and of itself is not very useful for finance given that we have usually limited data sets relative to the natural science. And so you need some way of, of imbuing the framework with uh, model specification, which are known as robust models in finance, right? Uh, 
Um, and so that paper essentially builds a robust uh, noisy ore framework that is appropriate for financial practitioners that um, essentially have limited time series that they're dealing with, which is all. On the subject of finance, jumping back to Armenia, how, how are the financials of Armenia right now as a country? It's a great question. So uh, I was looking last night on the Global Innovation Index, which is sponsored by Cornell University and WIPO, which is the World Intellectual Property Organization. And they have four classifications. Armenia is classified as an upper middle income country. There's upper income, upper middle income, lower middle income, and lower income. So, um, you know, long story short, it's essentially, um, you're basically getting, um, uh, you know, West European or American, I'd rather say, uh, sort of skill sets and skill levels uh, with literally half the cost if you invest there, right? So, you know, it's not the cheapest place in the world uh, for human capital and sort of uh, you know, skilled labor, but it's by, by no means the most expensive. And so you see the evidence of this not, is not just in the IT industry, but you know, a, a, a decade and a half, I think, ago or more, uh, all of the big four accounting firms located much of their East European operations in Armenia for that specific purpose, because the rent is cheaper than, for example, Moscow. Uh, the salaries are a little bit cheaper, but you get the same quality of work that you would get in Paris or London or Germany, right? This is a much fact. lower taxes than as well. Yeah, much lower taxes. Uh, you, you know, it's a, a little bit more of a laissez-faire tax system, if you will. And, you know, for IT companies uh, in particular, you get a lot of tax breaks and credits when you invest in the country, especially if the investments are, you know, sizable. So, you know, and, you know, there's evidence of this. So you see, like, uh, for various um, uh, startups, uh, you know, uh, you've got major VC companies, Sequoia Capital, Sierra Ventures, already in the country investing. So this is well on its way. I think, you know, as far as I'm concerned, yeah, go ahead. Yes, I saw Sequoia Capital was in Armenia, and I thought that was really interesting. Very thought-provoking. Yeah, I mean, I think it's a testament to these firms, to these VC firms, that they actually are really, really looking globally for, uh, you know, the best ideas. But it's also a testament to Armenia, obviously, that they, you know, the country was able, able to develop uh, the kind of technology and applications that are attractive to major VC firms, which, you know, quite frankly, can put their capital anywhere, anywhere they want, obviously. And so the fact that they would, you know, um, invest in Armenia is a, a vote of confidence, I think. So, you know, I think, you know, the evolution uh, of IT in Armenia has really gone from, um, you know, let me, 20 years ago, you know, app, app, you know, app building, which still exists, right, is, is, exists everywhere, more co consumer applications, if you will, uh, and has evolved into much more industrial applications, right, w whether it's military, you know, Armenia is in a pretty dangerous neighborhood, you know, it's bordered by Iran, Turkey, Azerbaijan. Indeed. Uh, yeah, it's a, it's a, you know, you got to be a tough cookie to, to, to survive in that in that area. No, Ar Armenia has obviously, you know, everyone should be familiar with the, the awful past that Armenia has with Turkey. Turkey, uh, you know, is a country that, uh, you know, just committed vast atrocities on Armenia. Yeah, genocide. And, you know, we, you know, Armenians still live with that today. And as a result, cybersecurity, surveillance, uh, you, you know, is a huge part of the, the industrial concern, if you will, of the country and is increasing going forward, right? It's not going to decrease, right? So, um, you know, Armenia always reminded me of Israel in that, in that you have a, a people very technologically driven, 50 to 70 to 100 years off from a major genocide, and really exciting economy. Yeah, there are a lot of parallels. I mean, I think, um, you know, I think Israel, uh, you know, declared independence in 48. So it's got, you know, a, a head start of a, several decades. Uh, you know, in terms of uh, independent development, yeah. Armenia got independence from the Soviet Union from 91, but I think the, traje the trajectory is the same, right, essentially. Uh, and, you know, that's, a, I think, a positive development, right? No country is perfect, but I think in terms of, um, you know, what both of these countries have done and are doing in terms of um, having um, IT as a major part of their economy is, is uh, something to be, you know, proud of and to, to get behind. So, for example, again, in that, uh, in that WIPO study, you know, I was looking at some of the stats. So Armenia ranks out of 133 countries, 14th um, in the uh, of 14 in terms of in, uh, information technology as a percentage of trade. Right, that's a pretty high number. Uh, if you look at things like um, uh, utility patents, it ranks or utility models 22nd out of 133. Uh, if you look at um, uh, uh, you know citations in leading journals. Uh, it's got, uh, you know, per capita and per billion dollars of GDP uh, among the most favorable rankings in the world as well. 
I love that stat. Citations in leading journals is one of the best manifestations of the actual research that's happening in a country. It really shows how much knowledge is really being applied to research and what's going on there. Really fantastic uh, stat there, Dr. Simonio. Now, my friend who runs the uh, Deep Learning Society of Italy said, you know, the AI scene in Italy is, is practically dead. There, no, nothing's happening. Whereas if you look over to Armenia, they're blowing us out of the water. And well, yeah, I mean, th I think there's reasons behind all this. So, you know, I think, um, you know, if we speak bluntly about history, and this, this applies to Jews as well, um, you know, Armenia has some natural resources in terms of mineral wealth, but in reality, you know, it's really education that has carried, you know, the people, if you will, forward throughout the centuries. This is from the Ottoman Empire and the Russian Empire and through independence. So when you have a culture that emphasizes education, it's something, first of all, that takes literally centuries to build that appreciation for learning. But then once you have it, you never let it go, right? Yeah. And so I think essentially that's what's going on in, in these types of countries that are, I would say, relatively resource poor, but, you, you know, they have a strong tradition of learning and education. So that's something that, you know, is not going to go away. Yeah, no, Armenia has some of the most beautiful mountains in the world, but I don't, I don't know how much value you can really tap from the mountains, however. Yeah. Well, it, it, it's valuable in that, um, if you were going to relocate there, which, you know, some many European and American firms have, have branches in Armenia, obviously, right? Mm -hmm. uh, if you're going to send a team there, you know, the standard of living, the quality of life is very good, right? Not only is it relatively cheap versus, let's say, New York or Boston, where I am, or uh, Europe, but, you, you know, uh, friendly people, great food, the weather uh, is, uh, well, the weather can be good and bad, but this landscape and the scenery is breathtaking. And so, uh, it's a, it's a, it's a fairly, uh, I would say it's a pretty good, uh, quality of life that you live there. And so, uh, you know, you can't, you can't underestimate that. Plus the crime rate is very low. That's another key important thing. And it's a pretty clean country as well, which I look at, I don't know about you. I look at that when I go somewhere, I visit. Oh, without a doubt. Cleanliness is fantastic. No, yeah. one of the things I love about Rose Wharf, the development behind you is it's one of the cleaner developments I've seen. Yeah. More. Boston's really clean. Boston's yeah. a very clean city indeed. They, uh, if, if you're a, a festive compulsive like I am on, on that stuff, it matters. One of the first things I know is I get off the airplanes. Like, you know, what, what is the, what, how clean is this city? You know, they take care of their themselves. Anyway. Yes, uh, uh, no, yeah, hi, being hyper OCD is generally negative, <laughs> but I, I, it does make me more keen to the Singapore's of the world. Yes, yes. Yes, no, I think Singapore's lovely. But um, so... Ar Armenia, you know, it's got great food, low taxes, thriving AI scene. The more I read about it, the more I was like, this country is smoking. It's, it's really going to be, you know, a next generation player, you know, that you're going to read about more and more and more in the news. And I was, do you think there's anything that could stop it? Is there anything that you're worried about? Well, um, I I'm always worried about the security situation in the, mm -hmm. in the read. Right. Um, yes, that's what I was getting towards. Rather. Yeah, but that's about it. Now that said, you, you know, um, you know, even recently Armenia went through a, a quite a long war with Turkey and Azerbaijan two, three months ago, and its macroeconomic stability was not even tested. So yeah. you, you know, things didn't go haywire, and that's during COVID, right? Itself. Um, you know, so you have COVID, a war, and the macro economy stays stable. Um, so in that sense, that was a great test. I'm not so worried about the macro economy, macroeconomic stability. Um, you know, if you look at even things like the uh, uh, Corruptions Perceptions Index, Armenia has shot up in its rankings over the last 10 no, years. That's a great index, actually. Very important index. Yeah, out of 185 countries, um, uh, it's ranked, I think, 60th, which is in the top third more. And in the opposite direction, Dr. Simone, in Turkey has gotten more corrupt, 86, more dangerous. And Azerbaijan is 129th, I think, which is the, one of the most corrupt regimes in the world. So except for Georgia, which is right next door, okay. you got Iran, which also ranks very low, and, and Russia as well. You've got really a bastion of transparency and cleanliness in terms of its you know, op, you know, corruption. Uh, if you add to that the, the business acumen of the citizens and, you know, like you said, the thriving sort of IT and AI scene, I think it bodes well. I think a lot of the security challenges are being met, especially after the recent, you know, uh, war. Um, and quite uh, frankly, Dr. Simonian, I would say, you know, Turkey's leader is the largest threat towards Armenia's bright future. Yeah, I mean, he is not even good for his own people, right? If you oh, look at the he's number, terrible for his own people. Look at the number of journalists that are jailed in Turkey. If you look at, um, uh, you know, the, the, the prisoners since the, the failed coup attempt a few years ago. 
Uh, yeah, so I think ultimately, um, you, you know, I think there are security challenges, but you know, other countries like Israel also have them. I think the Armenia has no choice but to meet them. And one of the major ways you meet them is with technology, right? And so that just has to happen really, and is happening. Yeah. No, I'm, I'm very excited about Armenia. And I, I've had a real love for this country since I was a teenager. So seeing it thrive, you know, is, is really fantastic. And uh, Dr. Simonian, I hope, uh, you know, we can get you back on a talk cause of learning sometime. That would be a lot of fun. Yeah, it's, yeah. it's something I'm terribly ignorant on. I'm dying to learn more. Out and you know uh, I've got two buddies who've been pushing me on it: uh, Judea Pearl and uh, my buddy Darko from Causa Lens, and yeah. two very smart guys. So I, I, I I'm going to read your entire paper in full, and yeah. uh, you know I, I wish you stay safe during these crazy times. And thank you so much for coming on today. Doctor. Thank you. Thanks for having me. I always love talking to you. Oh no, it's, it's pleasure is all ours, and uh, be well.